talk about uh, the principles of the plasma technology and I want to focus also on applications. Um, I'm far from um, being comprehensive in this talk, it's impossible because it's that wide field at the moment. So for the specialists among you, it might be a little bit boring. But maybe you will find a little bit of, of new aspects uh, from my view on the topic. So it's, of course, a special view of myself from the company Plasma Electronic. We are in the south of Germany, a very small company, 25 people, or something like that. So we are machine builders. And we are dealing with the plasma technology to make it feasible for industrial applications. Everybody know, might know that it's a, a very old technology in, in, let's say, in semiconductor industry. But um, for normal, let's say, normal industrial applications, it's uh, still quite new. And only few people know what you can do with it. Though you have it in your everyday life, I will show you that. Here on the fair, we are a partner of uh, the MAN Group. Uh, we work together in the Netherlands, together with the MAN Group. It's a very nice collaboration. So, how did surface technology, the modern surface technology, look like in 1900? <laughs> it looked like that. So the people were brushing, painting things. Since that time, a lot of things were going on, and we have we can now uh, use plasma technology. I will go into detail for that. I will introduce a little bit into plasma, a little physics about it from my view, what is really important, an overview over the industrial applications, and then I will go into details, activation on cleaning of surfaces, the plasma coating technologies, the PECVD, quite new field is PEALD. I, I cannot go into depth, of course, uh, uh, it's a pity, but anyway, I will try to present you the principles. And if there is still some time, I will also present a little bit about PVD and what we did. So plasma. What is plasma? Plasma is a gas discharge. That's the definition. Some people call it the four states of matter. I don't like it too much, uh, because uh, if we look here, we have everywhere we have charged particles. So what is special is that there's a quite high density of charged particles. Uh, we know that from the stars, nuclear fusion, from flames, lightnings, and uh, also from fluorescent and lamps. But what we want to do is we want to, do, to use this technology to change surfaces. That's, this, that's the special thing about it. So this is the only slide, physics slide. <laughs> um, I want to show you that the plasma is hot and cold at the same time. So this might sound like a contradiction, but it's not, it's, it's okay. Ah, sorry, ah, I'm too fast. So, uh, plasma is a gas plus electronic excitation. You have a lot of different uh, things inside the plasma, molecules, excited molecules, fragments. UV light is quite important. And you have ions and electrons, and these two, define the plasma, as I said before. So, one diagram, which I think is really important, is this one. If you look at the pressure in your system, and you look at the temperatures, when you are at the normal ambient pressure, the, the ions and the electrons have the same temperature. This is because they can travel only a few microns until they meet each other. Meet each other. So, yeah, but if you go down in pressure into vacuum, then the systems, as we say, decouple. Because the electrons can go, let's say, up to centimeters, which is uh, far for an electron. Yeah, it's really far for an electron to, to travel. And it can take up a lot of energy, so it has a lot of uh, velocity. And velocity in physics means temperature. The ions are very heavy. So they don't take up too much energy to, uh, uh, they, are not, they, they are not so fast in the end. So they keep cold. This means we can drive chemical reactions with the hot electrons without heating up the substrate because the substrate heating is 
uh, is by the by the ions and by the molecules. So, what kind of technical applications do we have? So, from my view, there are a lot of others. Um, I'm not able to count them all. So, atmospheric plasmas are well known from welding. It's a simple atmospheric plasma surface technology because you change the surface in welding. Uh, flame coatings are also well known. The flaming of polymer surface is also a plasma technology to change the surface to make it more hydrophilic for painting or su such things. You can do it by flaming. You can do it by atmospheric plasma sources for surface activation and cleaning. And there are uh, really new types of sources for that. If you are more interested in that, please visit the man uh, booth stand at 171. There will be more information for you. But I will concentrate myself now on the low pressure vacuum techniques. So iron plating is well known by the old technology. And there are PVD sputtering, arc PVD for metallic coatings. And I will concentrate on the PECVD technology where we are really specialized in. So the, the, the principle of a low pressure plasma machine is quite simple. Low pressure means we need a vacuum pump and a <coughs> vacuum vessel. So we have a vacuum vessel with an electrode. We have a vacuum pump. We pump out uh, the, the air. And then we bring in some process gas. Usually there are more than one. You bring in process gases, and you control the whole system with the process gas flow, the generator power for your, for your typical high frequency energy, and the vacuum pump. What happens always is that we bring in the gas, at the same time we pump out the, the used gas molecules. So, when we want to do activation and cleaning, it's simply done by oxygen plasma usually. So you have a surface, you make an oxygen, you, you make radicals, and with these radicals, you are able to activate the surface. This means there will be some OH groups, some carboxyl groups and whatever on the surface, and this will make it polar, so it will be easier paintable, printable, or whatever. So this is the same with flaming of surfaces or with atmospheric plasma. And if there is some hydrocarbon uh, on the surface, then of course you can burn it. It's a cold burning of, this, of, of, of some contamination. That's the trick. You can even use it for plastics. It's not a problem. So I will show you some examples from our um, company. So this is a quite large vacuum chamber with six cubic meters for car parts, auto parts from Audi. And they are activated before the painting. They are all made of different kind of plastics. The machine is integrated in an inline system. It has two doors, open and closed, and the whole process is in the range of three minutes. So six cubic meters, three minutes vacuum process. So this might be different what, uh, what others do. So a very nice thing is the activation of toys. I have children, I have three small children. So Lego, uh, what they do, just have to do is they have to activate the surface of these figures because they, have, they, they are allowed to use only water-based inks. <coughs> but if you ever tried to paint your toys with water-based uh, colors, it's not possible, of course. So what we do is we do a plasma in a rotating drum, and then it's able uh, the system is able to activate the surface so that water-based inks can be used. But this not only holds for, for, uh, for Lego, but also for Merklin, for this, uh, you know, the company maybe. So, the activation of, of thermic lenses, <coughs> like I have one since, I think, two months or something like that. So, you have to have a hard coat on the, on the glasses, and the hard coat can only be applied if you activate this kind of um, material. Uh, you can have a batch process, as you can see here, a small chamber, or we also build an inline process where you have this small vacuum chamber in, in line of your uh, coating process. This looks like that, it's not very, uh, you can see it, the plasma burning and the, the glass is here. If we now want to, not to activate, but we want to coat things, 
Then we have to use the reactive gases like C2H4. And what we can do with that is we can coat surfaces with a carbon-based coating, DLC. You have heard of that, maybe. It's quite famous. I want to talk about a little bit about the motivation to use huh? ah, to use DLC because it glitches coating characteristics. Of course, there are many nice coatings around you can use. This is PTFE. It's a very nice coating. Um, it's anti-sticking, hydrophobic, corrosion protection, low friction, but it has some drawbacks because it's mostly it's thick and it's quite soft. Okay, why we cannot we cannot just use uh, typical hard coatings? We already have ah sorry we already have from PVD titanium nitride, titanium aluminium nitride. Who you know from drills because they are very good coatings. They are thin, hard, temperature resistant, but Usually they are hydrophilic, they are not really corrosion protection, and they have high friction. But if you need both, so you need an anti-sticking, uh, corrosion protecting coating with a low friction, but it has to be thin and hard, then you use, uh, then you use DLC like coating. So this is uh, the typical application um, we have. I just show you some pictures. I cannot go into detail, but it's always like that. You need a, uh, a hard coating which has uh, corrosion protection or is uh, low friction. Uh, car manufacturing industry, in the taps, special products. Or let's say here we have um, this is for gear pumps. In a gear pump, you want to have a wear resistant coating. Which is uh, which is corrosion corrosion protective, and is easy to be cleaned in the in the pump, especially for paint pumps. So this is now uh, a little view on the coating itself. This is a FIV image of such a coating, and we can do with funny things like like multi-layer coatings, hard soft, hard soft, hard soft. This helps us to to coat special materials which are soft sometimes. Okay, machines, I just go through it. Uh, they can be very small, 10 liters, 45 liters, 80 liters, uh, 200 liters, 700 liters. So we build machines. Usually we build machines uh, customer made. So the customer has a problem with some product and we build the machine around the problem. Just one picture of an inner view of the machine. Here you have some electrodes. You put the pieces then on the electrodes, and you can coat it with different gases. OK. Now, another application which is really nice is the changing the wettability of the surfaces. So you want to have, for instance, you want to have a hydrophilic surface. Then you can use a special process we call Aquatair. It's a brand name, just a brand name, with a thickness of about only 10 nanometers with very high surface tension and with a very low uh, static contact angle, uh, the temperature stability is quite high. So uh, it looks like that. So you have a good wetting. <coughs> One application you have at home, dishwasher basket. If you buy a dishwasher basket produced in Europe, it will have a plasma coating on top. Um, this is. Simply why? Because we want to do it hydrophilic. This sounds like a contradiction. But you don't want to have any drops. You might know that if you have plastic dishes, they are always <coughs> wet after the, after the dishwashing. But you want to have a dry surface. <coughs> and a dry surface you can get if you make it hydrophilic. And there is a film on the plastic surface built up. And this dries very easily. So this is a very nice application. We have several machines built for this application. Here is just an example. Um, these are fully automatic inline machines. So, and also for biotech, uh, I think you can imagine that there are a lot of applications where you have to have blood running, for instance. So you have to have a good flow in blood channels, good flow of other liquids. OK, another example is a hydrophobic coating. Of course, we can make it hydrophilic. We can also make it hydrophobic. The thickness is also very low. Can be very low, but we can make it thicker, of course. 
Um, we have a very low surface tension in that case, a static convex angle very high, and also a high temperature uh, stability, and we have a bad wetting. Of course, this is what we want to have. For instance, uh, in biotech disposals also, you don't want to have uh, liquids uh, wetting your needles you use or something like that. So you have to make them non-wetting. A very nice application is the coating of rubber. Why should I coat rubber? Rubber is a very nice material. It has a high flexibility, flexibility for sealing tasks, but there is a disadvantage. It tacks or sticks. And especially in uh, precision valves, we are on a precision fair. So in precision valves, we have, a, we have a problem with that. So what we do is, especially here in security valves, you also have wear, we do a, a, a thin coating on top to prevent the O-rings from sticking together, from noise, making noise. High speed valves, we, uh, with a faster opening, with microseconds range, without having this tacking. And without bringing in some grease or something like that. Or security walls. So how does it work? A little bit of technology. You have your polymer, EPDM, FPM, NDR, TPEs, whatever. So some rubber. You have a contamination. So what you can do in the same machine is you can first clean the, the, the contamination with, let's say, some oxygen plasma. Then you do an inert gas plasma. This inert gas plasma is able to cross-link the layer to make it a little bit harder, and on that layer, you bring your plasma coating. So that's the way it works. So, I said to you I cannot go too much into detail, but I want to show you a little bit more of what is, what is able, what, what we are able to do. PALD is a new technology we, we want to go into. It's well known, ALD is well known, of course, from semiconductor industry. For instance, aluminum oxide or titanium oxide coatings are well known. How does it work? <coughs> ALD is atomic layer deposition. So you have, you have different gases coming inside, but you sequentially bring them into the chamber. So the, the, the idea is to bring one precursor, one gas that makes chemisorption on the surface, and then you pump and flush the chamber, and then you bring the second gas, which then reacts with the surface to build up, let's say, aluminum oxide. If you are lucky, you have a system where you can do this uh, cyclic with a really layer by layer uh, deposition. So that's well known and very, very, very accurate, very good technology. So why plasma? Sometimes it's not possible that you have a reaction at, at this point because the temperature is too low, for instance. A material cannot stand the temperature you have to have for the reaction. So you make a plasma. And there's another advantage. You can omit these pumping and flushing steps because without the plasma, the material is not reacting. So you can save some time. There's a small machine we have for, for this application. So I think this um, <coughs> plasma enhanced atomic layer deposition has also a future for, for precision uh, tasks like medical uh, barrier coatings and these things. So not only in semiconductor industry, but we all begin also with semiconductors. I have here a little picture of, of an aluminum oxide coating on a semiconductor structure. And it's very accurate. And I say it's the most precise conformal atom by atom deposition you can do with ALD, not only with plasma ALD, but also with standard ALD. And you can see that it's, look at here, everywhere you have the same thickness. It's extremely accurate. Also on, on, on very complicated structures. Because you have these layer by layer chemical reactions, you can really control uh, angstroms, nanometers. It's not a problem. But there's a drawback, of course, as with every technology. The drawback is that it's very slow. And you cannot do anything about it. It's simply because you have to have this cyclic ex exchange of gases. And if you build a, a large chamber, you are in the range of a few seconds 
changing gases. So you have a few seconds for one monolayer at least. So people think of mixed processes. You can, of course, mix PECVD and PEALD and make some fancy processes. This is what we do also. Try to increase a little bit the, the, the speed of the coating, but then you lose a cursive. But sometimes, as for um, some, some very thin diffusion barrier coatings or something like that, you only need a few nanometers. 20 nanometers, 50 nanometers is enough. Then it's still interesting, even if it's so slow. Look at this. It's a very precise coating, even in this difficult shape here. This was done by the University of Stuttgart using one of our laboratory machines. So I still have some time, a little, so I can go a little bit into PVD. We are not that much specialist in, in uh, PVD coatings, but we have built some machines for that, special machines for special products. Um, physical vapor deposition itself is a, a large field. Huh? So you have a lot of technologies that call themselves PVD. <laughs> PVD just means physical vapor deposition, so you don't use a, a reactive gas but you use a target where you um, somehow evaporate the material. So there is, of course, thermal evaporation. You might know electron beam evaporation. I will talk a little bit about the, the magnetron sputtering technology, uh, the diode sputtering, and a little bit about the machine for arc evaporation. If you look at, <coughs> from the left to the right, the ionization of your um, metal particles increases in this direction. Of course, there are a lot of other technologies. Uh, they, they, um, increasing ionization by special uh, techniques like high pimps or something like that. I cannot go into detail for that. So, but what it's about, there's a nice uh, short movie here. What happens if you impinge a solid target by an argon ion of one kilovolt? Then you evaporate the material and if you put somewhere here, let's say, your substrate, you will coat it. This is the idea of sputtering. I like this from the University of Essen. It's very nice. And you can see from which layers the, the, the metal atoms come. So I have a picture of a small laboratory machine we built. So here is uh, shown a, a so-called magnetron, where you sputter your, your uh, metal atoms. In this case, it's an aluminum, so-called target. And you nicely can see this, uh, this color from the aluminum ions, this red color. If you change from here to here, on that side, there is a titanium target. So you can have titanium ions, and they look really different. And you can do, uh, let's say, multi layers by doing that. So it's a very nice machine. It's so called dual design, and you only need one power supply for this configuration. So, and in the end, I want to show a large machine we did. So, this machine has eight cubic meters of uh, volume. Here's some persons. So, it's a really large machine. What is the aim of this machine? We want to coat douche cabin profiles. So douche cabin profiles are usually made from aluminum. And the aluminum uh, cannot be really polished. So there's problems. You, you can use, of course, electroplating by making them very nicely uh, chromium-like looking. But electroplating, mm, environmental critical. So people don't want to have it. And, uh, the Italian company Nopellini, they are one of the world market legal leaders for the, for, the, for the douche cabins. They decided to go another way, to save energy, to, 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 be, to make it green. They call it the green line douche cabin. <laughs> so what they do, what we did is uh, we did a PVD coating on top of paint. So you make, you make the glands by a paint, and then you do a PVD coating on top. And the cycle time is about 30 minutes for 120 of these profiles. We sold to them two machines, and they work in three shifts. 
So um, you see that the PVD technology is now really at your home. I've shown you some applications. And all in all, the plasma technology nowadays is a powerful tool, and you can even do very nice pictures. I think two or three weeks still left for Christmas. So thank you very much for joining me with this small presentation. If you have questions, just meet me now or at the booth 171 at the Marn stand. Thank you very much. So what far kilo do you uh, pump out the uh, pump out the air? And this really de this um, uh, depends on the process. If you have a PVD process, you have to have high vacuum. That means you have to go down to ten to the uh, ten to the minus four millibar at least, or t uh, something like that. Ten to the minus two Pascal. I think in Pascal. Um, but for, for PCVD processes, usually it's enough to go down to 10 to the minus 3 millibar uh, because the process works at about 1 to 10 Pascal. So this is enough usually. But it really depends on your process. But the, the good thing is that we can use, as you have seen maybe, root pumping systems because they are, they are not so critical uh, for damaging or something like that, like, like turbo pumps. Mm. Any more questions? Uh, I have a question. Can you make alloys? Uh, with PVD, yes. Okay. You either use an alloy target, yeah. of course, that's the simplest way. Mm -hmm. uh, the people from target manufacturing, they will prepare everything for you. Or you use, like you have seen here, you okay. use the sputtering, and you can use different power on different targets. And with that, you can, in, you can in, a, in, a, in a wide range, you can vary your compositions. Titanium aluminium is a, is a very uh, standard um, material. It's done by PVD technology. Yeah. Any more question? If not, then once again, Jürgen, thank you very much for the presentation.